bad religion is like wine. The older, the better. The older, the better. Cool the average age of the band is still about 25, so it's not that old. Yeah. It's just that we were so young before <laughs> that it was absurd. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think the, the group is probably better now than it was five years ago, or nine years ago even. So what happened between 84 and uh, 88? I mean, there were four years of nothing about bad religion, and then the comeback of the year. Well, it's not that we did nothing, but we didn't have any vinyl. The group was active in the, in the United States playing, but if a group doesn't have new vinyl, then there's no uh, interest. When we started Bad Religion, we were all very young. And as we, you reach an age around, especially around 18 through 22, where you really are self-motivated. You go off in many directions. You lose a lot of friends during those years, I think. And uh, everybody went and did their own thing. Uh, the band still played once in a while, but only with myself being the only original core member. People, and then Peter played a, for a good number of those shows. Jay came back and played a good number of shows. Uh, but then uh, we didn't get this whole group back together again as it stands here until 87. Your lyrics changed from the first album where they had a more quiet general political yeah, stuff to more personal stuff and sometimes it seems to me that uh, yeah, you are a little bit not tired but uh, a little bit cynical and uh, more yeah, without big hope. On the new album? Yeah. And suffer? Suffer, yeah. Without hope. More pessimistic you mean? Yeah. More pessimistic than fuck Armageddon this is hell? <laughs> Which I I don't think the pessimism is any stronger. Maybe the uh, maybe we've gotten better at uh, writing um, gloomy lyrics. You know, um, they're never intended to make people think that there's no hope, though, because <clears throat> we don't make declarations. We don't say there is no hope. We rather uh, tend to pose questions and ask questions like, "How much is enough?" Is someone watching over you? Things like that. Um, there are a couple. Of, there are a couple declarations. A couple declarations. I mean, and um, suffer. We say. Uh, we say a few things. The um, of humanity. Yeah. See, w one thing that needs to be clarified is, as far as the lyrics on the album, Greg writes uh, half and I write half, and they mesh very closely. So, uh, because our our uh, philosophies are very similar, um, but I think maybe I'm a little bit more cynical than Greg. I think so. On the record, because I, I, I'll, I'll sit here and say that <clears throat> that there's no hope <laughs> <laughs> for certain areas, you know. Which is not to say that we need to just take a gun and shoot ourselves in the head, but um, but uh, just try to make the best of it and live life for the short period of time on Earth, you know. The pessimism in my lyrics stem more from uh, uh, not because I think there's no hope because I know that there's a great potential in, in humans. Um, but the pessimism comes from the realization that we're not realizing that potential. You understand? So it's a pessimism, but there's a degree of a lot of hope because I know how powerful the human mind is. Into the Unknown. What kind of album was that? Heavy drug abuse or...? <laughs> I mean, did you know that you're so popular here, that all the shows are so packed? When I, whenever I'm going into something that I don't know what's going to happen, I always try to think of the worst possible thing that's going to be horrible, so that if it is, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So, I, you know, I didn't think that we were this popular here. People and tend to be a lot more interested in lyrics over here, which I like, because I write songs. But, <laughs> you know, that's kind of a, a, uh, an added benefit when you are actually writing and people are listening. Because very often you write, you put a lot of thought into a song uh, and most often people just, I give it a 10 to dance to, you know, <laughs> they care about the music. So In America we receive criticism for our lyrics. Oh, how can you have punk rock music with words like this? It's <coughs> stupid, it's, you know, no one wants to hear it, you know, it's good like that. You know, it's like it's anti-punk rock or something, you know. Greg, you've 
toured Europe before with Circle Jerks and Gang Green, and yeah, you did a very different kind of tour. Yeah. If you compare both things, what do you feel? Well, it seems like more people come out to the the, the alternative shows. A little bit more people, probably because of the lower ticket price. I, I like both. Somewhere in the middle. Do you have some kind of political message or what do you think about yeah, politics? Or Bad religion stays out of politics. People think we're a political band. Maybe we have one song on the album that sounds political, which is part two of the numbers game. But um, <clears throat> in general, I think uh, bad religion is more concerned with sociological ideology and um, perhaps uh, metaphysical questions and not so much political, you know. Um, I really don't... Uh, uh, beyond politics. At least that's what I've tried to do in uh, recent, recently when I write, is I try to go a step beyond uh, Americans versus Europeans versus uh, Russians. I try to bring it to a level of humanity in general. And when you start talking about humanity, you're far beyond politics. <laughs>